In this video, we're going to have a look at how to integrate a composite function in specifically looking at a composite function where there's a power, where the basis of function is raised to an exponent. But the important thing is that in that original integral, that composite power function is multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So it's actually just another adaptation of the power rule, but using the idea of the chain rule. So let's have a look. What I need to see here is a function raised to an exponent, then multiplied by the derivative of that inside function. So we're going to use a lot of colors here. So let's say here that this is my function. I need to see my function raised to an exponent, and I also need to see the derivative of that function. Then all I do is apply the power rule, I add 1, divide by that exponent. When I undo this using the chain rule, that's where my derivative appears. Okay, now in many of our questions, it doesn't fit what it looks like in this rule. So we often have to create a derivative so the integral matches this rule. Right, so it's best explained using an example, so let's have a look. Cool. All right, so in this example, in each case, I, and I encourage you to do the same thing, just highlight or circle your function and your derivative, just to make sure that it actually matches that rule. So in this case, here is my function. There's my function. See, because it's been raised to the power of 4. If I differentiate that, I get 3x squared minus 2. So I'm looking for that somewhere here. I'm looking for 3x minus 2, and there I see it. That's my derivative. So my derivative is 3x squared minus 2. So now I can go and I can have a look. What am I trying to do? I take that base function, add 1, and divide by the exponent. So let's do that here. Okay, so my base function is x cubed minus 2x plus 5. I add 1 to the exponent and I divide by that exponent. And don't forget to add your constant of integration. When you're starting out with integration, it's a good idea to go back and check that if you differentiate your function, you're actually going to get back to the original. So let's differentiate this, bearing in mind that we need to use the chain rule. If I had to differentiate this, I would take that out as 1 over 5. Using my chain rule, I first differentiate the outer function. I'd bring the 5 to the front, which immediately cancels with the 1 over 5. And I would subtract 1. So I've started with x cubed minus 2x plus 5 to the power of 4. Then I would go inside that function and I would differentiate it. So I get 3x squared minus 2, which is exactly what I see there. So the fact that this original function has the derivative means I use the chain rule here to get there. So I have to take that into consideration when I'm going that way as well. Cool, let's try another one. Now, let's have a look at this function. I'm looking for a composite function that's a power, so base raised to an exponent, multiplied by the derivative of that base. What's the derivative of 3x minus 4? It's 3. Now, I don't see that 3 here. This is where it comes in where we need to create that derivative. So I'm going to write the integral exactly how I want it. And that's what's quite cool about maths. You can do a lot of manipulation as long as it's mathematically legit. So I would like to see the derivative of what's of that base, which I know is 3. And then there it is, my 3x minus 4 to the power of 5 dx. But now I can't just leave it like that because I've introduced this 3. I can multiply by 3 as long as I times by 1 over 3 or divide by 3. That 1 over 3 can be inside or outside. I put it outside so it doesn't interfere. All right, so let's have a look. Does it now fit my pattern? There's my function that's being raised to the exponent. Then I go inside that function, and the derivative of 3x minus 4 is 
3. So there's the derivative. Now that it matches the rule, remember the rule says you just go to the function, you add an exponent, and you divide. But don't forget that I've also got a 1 over 3 here. I go to my function, which is 3x minus 4. I add 1 to get an exponent of 6, and I also divide by that exponent. Don't forget your constant of integration. Now simplify to make it a bit more pretty. So I'm going to have 1 over 18. 3x minus 4 to the power of 6 plus c. You could have also written 3x minus 4 to the power of 6 all over 18 plus c. Well now, again, just go backwards and check that if you differentiate this, you're going to get back to that. So let's do it. If I differentiate 3x minus 4 to the power of 6, the 6 comes to the front. So I've got 6 over 18, which gives me a third. I subtract 1. That gives me 5. There's my 5. So I've got, let's see, sorry, 6 over 18. Yeah, a third. Then I go inside. So I've got my third so far. I've got my 3x minus 4 to the power of 5. Chain rule says I must go inside. The derivative of 3x minus 4 is 3. There's my 3. Okay, so it does work. Let's have a look at this example here. All right, so this one looks a little bit more technical, but we've got tools to cope with it. We know we don't like um, stuff in the denominator, if possible. We also know we don't like roots, so we're going to change that up a little bit. So this is the integral of 7x multiplied by x squared minus 1 to the power of negative a half dx. So I took this to the top. Instead of writing root, I wrote to the power of negative a half. Now do I see um, the rule yet? Let's check. There's my composite function. That's a power. My base raised to an exponent. So then I go inside and I differentiate that, x squared minus 1, which gives me 2x. I don't currently have 2x. I've got the 7, which I can actually just take out, and I've got the x. So I always start by writing down exactly how I want it to look and then doing my manipulation. So I would like to have my x squared minus 1 to the negative a half, and I would like to have the derivative of that inside function. Great. So I always have what I want. The only difference is I still have this 7. It's going to sit outside. And if I've introduced a 2 by multiplying, I need to get rid of that 2 by dividing. Now I have what I want. There's my function. There's my derivative. And it fits the rule. Right, so let's apply the rule here. That 7 over 2 just sits there. Times by, I've got my base and I raise. And I add 1 to the exponent. So negative a half plus 1 gives me a half. I then divide by that and add my constant of integration. Make it a bit prettier. 7 over 2 divided by half is the same as 7 over 2 times 2, which gives me 7. I don't like to leave my answers with um, fraction exponents, so let's rewrite that. That's x squared minus 1 rooted plus my constant of integration. Okay, now let's see if we can go backwards to differentiate. I'm actually just going to start here, because if I was starting at this point, I'd have 7 x squared minus 1 to the power of a half. Okay, well, actually, let's start that. The half comes to the front. A half times 7 is 7 over 2. Cool. Then I go, so there's my 7 over 2. Then I go inside, and then I subtract 1. So that's my negative a half. Then I go inside, differentiate x squared minus 1, and I get 2x. Pretty that up, and I get that. Right, so that's how we use this rule, and this rule will be very useful later as we do more and more integration by inspection.